In the previous lesson, we talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When we talked about the gifts of the Spirit, I said that the gifts of the Spirit is the tool given by God. Right? It's the equipment of the Spirit. The tool. Also, I said that through the gifts we can help others when doing ministry work. There are the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's have a look. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 11. Let's read together. 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. 8. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. 9. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. 10. To another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues. 11. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one, just as He determines. In the previous lesson 28 to 1, we've already mentioned three of them. It was the gifts of the word of wisdom, the gifts of the word of knowledge, and the gifts of the discerning Spirit. Once again, the gifts of the discerning spirit means that when you are given these gifts from God then you can see the spiritual beings who exist behind the happening. In fact, those whose spiritual eyes are open can see invisible satanic beings. Spiritual satanic beings have various form. Some look like a real devil grabbing a person from behind. Some seem like smoke with color such as black, red, pink, or yellow. When someone is surrounded by this red smoke, it means the spirit of violence and murder is holding the person. Such a person would be very violent and even tend to commit murder. Most of the murderers have this red smoke looking like a piece of cloth which is covering them. Those with open spiritual eyes can see that. Sometimes a coiled up snake can be seen. Some people see a snake or a devil standing on the top of buildings. With open spiritual eyes, those can be seen. I can also see those with my spiritual eyes, though it was not all the time. When God opened my spiritual eyes, when He let me get inside the spiritual world, I could see them. One time, I saw the black-colored cloud totally covering a man. And how he behaved was very wicked. And the black clouds were getting bigger as the man did more evil things. How God shows those evil things to us is different every time. But definitely, there are evil spirits working in the spiritual world. Sometimes, it looks a cloud of smoke or a form of a devil. When something happens, what you should know is you should not judge others by looking at the outside phenomenon itself. You should not blame the one while saying, he is the one to blame or it is the person's fault. And when you know there is invisible power or spirit working on the person, you don't get heartbroken because of the person. There is a lot of unbelievers who criticize Christian and Christ Jesus. Sometimes, even though a Christian hasn't made some critical fault, some people would blame the person severely by saying you people believing Jesus, but in that case, the people are saying those words because of the satanic beings in them. Devils usually live inside unbelievers and control over them. Devils build houses inside unbelievers and live there. At the very moment, the devils inside the unbeliever are speaking those words against Jesus. Therefore, you do not need to get heartbroken because of the words. To whom the devils inside the person are fighting against? To Jesus. You should be aware of the unseen demonic beings behind people. Then, you don't get hurt anymore. And you know the moment the devil works on someone. If then, what should we do? We should resist the devil in the name of Jesus. The reason certain spirits especially work on some people. The very reason there is a lot of same sexuality spirit in this country these days. When you see homosexuals in this country, you should notice the spirit of obscenity and homosexuality is clutching the nation. If you are spiritually sensitive, 
you can notice that. There is a pastor Henry Groover. He said he wants to go to Japan in the future. His spirituality is exceptional. The reason he wants to go to Japan is that the practice of idolatry in Japan is so severe. When delivering the gospel in those countries with heavy idolatry, there is much power blocking the ministry work. It is like going for war and we fight with prayer. So if the missionaries in those nations are not spiritually strong enough, they can't survive there. Many missionaries say Japan is a tomb of missionaries. It means that when missionaries go there, they usually can't break through or proceed with their ministry. It is because the satanic power is so strong there. You know that there are so many idols on almost every street. I heard in Japan even a stone on a street is regarded as a god. The pastor Henry Groover said he is given the gift that can hear the screaming sound of blood wherever he goes. What an amazing gift! In Genesis, when Cain killed Abel, what did God say? God said, Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Like that, this land is alive. You know how the land produces plants. If this land is dead, it can't produce anything. The land is alive. Therefore, the Lord judges even the land because there are so much blood spilled on it. The pastor said he can hear blood screaming. He was walking on somewhere and he heard the sound of babies and people crying. The Lord told the pastor that the cries were from the 4th century. It turned out people were murdered there. They had been killed wrongly and I guess they were Christians. When he heard the cries, he prayed to God that God restores this nation. Even though the people who had committed the sin is not alive, he still prays God forgives the sins in this land. Lord, I on behalf of them pray that Lord restores this land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 also says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So when something happens, we should know that there are devils and God behind the phenomenon. And I've already told you that the gift of discerning spirits can be given as a vision, intuition, or voice and so on. Now, let's move on to the gift of faith. The gift of faith is one of the nine gift of the Spirit. As we know the nine fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control, Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. And faithfulness is the gift of faith. The faith that we bear as the fruit of the Spirit. Do we have faith in us or not? Yes, we all have, and that faith is what we usually have all the time. But how about this? But we are talking about the gift of faith. The faith that comes to us as a gift of the Spirit and the faith that we always have are different. The gift of the Spirit is what we receive from the Spirit momentarily. Even if you are not a man with great faith, there is a time that the firm faith as a strong conviction comes into you. I firmly believe it will be done. You know that sort of conviction. If it comes to you, that is the gift of faith. We can heal by the gift of faith. In Acts 3, it talks about Peter and the lame beggar who was at the temple gate every day. I heard even Jesus pass the temple about two times when he was alive. And the beggar was still there when Jesus passing by there. Peter had gone to the temple to pray so many times. Imagine how many times Peter would have gone there. One day, when Peter and John arrived at the gate of the temple, they saw the beggar and said to him, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Saying to the beggar, Walk, Peter took him by the right hand and helped him up. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. It means that the gift of faith came upon Peter for that moment. When you proceed with the gift of the faith, if you have a firm conviction and think, he is lame, but he will be healed for sure, at that moment you should say out loud, walk in the name of Jesus. 
At the moment the gift of the Spirit comes upon you, the Spirit gives you the power as the manifestation of Himself. In my case, when I hold a healing meeting, sometimes I intuitively realize that the person will get healed today. That person will get healed today. Then the gift of faith comes to me. And I firmly believe the person will get healed today. And then the person actually gets healed. The gift of faith comes upon us momentarily. Once we believe Jesus, the basic faith comes into us. But the faith is not enough. Some people grow in faith and keep challenging themselves by going for higher targets. However, there are also those who stay at the one-year-old level of faith. Why is that? For they never challenge themselves with faith, they always stay there. Our faith is our life of faith we can increase our faith. If your faith is about one-year-old level, then your life of faith is one-year-old as well. If your spiritual level is five years old, then five-year-old faith comes from you. One day, the Lord says that you should increase your faith from now on for He has given you the faith. And the Lord says it is your responsibility to increase your faith. God says we should truly believe in God's word that we wrote down on the note and move forward one step by one. Simply put, when it comes to healing we can start to heal from a cold or migraine. We can start with simple and easy ones. Having faith in Jesus and believing God's word that by his wounds you have been healed, 1 Peter 2 verse 24. It can be difficult at first, but because it is simply a cold we can heal without big trouble. After that, you will see the outcome that you get healed from a cold. You would think, ah, I can give a try on other things next time. You can keep on trying like that. Like that, if you go on to level 1, then you can challenge yourself with other things at level 2. After you have the result from your challenge, you will be grateful to God. And then you go for the next stage, level 3. You proceed like that. You increase your faith following the anointing of the Lord inside you. When it comes to money, the same method can be applied. When God gives us money, He does not give one-year-old child a hundred million. Some people simply think they can harvest as they planted. For example, a five-year-old child planted $50 as seed money expecting to harvest $1,000. What could God expect to get from a five-year-old child after giving $1,000 to the child? The child behaves like that because he does not know the value of money. There are people who plant seed money for one's avarice. However, what is important is increasing your own faith. At first, you can start from praying for the supply of food such as rice. At the first stage, that prayer can be his faith. Next stage, you can pray for job. On stage 3, you can pray for your finance issue. For example, Lord, I need $10. For young children or students, they can start from $10 or $100. That way, you plant, harvest, ask for a bigger amount, and then gradually you can extend your limitation. When it comes to making offerings, it is the same. It was not easy for you to make $10 offerings in the past. But you kept planting and while doing so, you also received harvest from God. So this time, you decided to give $100 offerings. And later, you decided to $500. And later, $1,000. Like this, your faith grows bigger and bigger. If you don't have faith, you can never make a lot of offerings. I am not talking about the tithe. For some people, when they offer tithe for the first time, it is quite difficult for them. Because they think it is giving away their money and because they have never done it before. Hence, we need faith. The gift of faith is the gift of the Spirit that comes upon us momentarily. The Spirit gives us the gift. But it is not that we can work with the gift from the Spirit all the time. It is like this. Let's say you are five years old. You were living with the faith of five years old, or the faith of level five. One day, suddenly, the gift of faith came to you. So you received the faith, anointing, of ten years old one, or the faith of level ten. 
God has given you the gift of faith, anointing, to use you for some work for a brief time. So when you finish the work assigned by God, the anointing disappears. And then your faith becomes level 5 again. Do you get it? When you are starting your business, if the Lord gives you firm faith, then you know that the business will work. It is the same when we invest in something. At that time, the Lord gives us wisdom and direction. Then, you know intuitively where to invest money. I am not talking about investing money following your wisdom knowledge. That moment, you should invest with faith. But there is this case as well. You feel like don't do it, or uncomfortable. If then, you should stop immediately. Looking at the circumstance, it looks like the business will work out very good. It needs this. Even if the circumstance looks good outside, the inner voice is signaling you stop. You need to notice the sign. There is spiritual intuition inside us. I am explaining this to you. There is spiritual intuition inside us. It comes from our spirit. Using Jianla province dialect, simply put, it is a matter of yes or no. You know there's a time that you have to make choices out of two. Lord, should I go there or not? If you feel like the inner voice is saying go, it is a green light. And if the inner voice says, don't do it or don't go, then it is a red light. You can just feel that from within. When looking at something or a business plan from your own perspective, even though they look good outside and others say you will make a profit for sure if you invest there, but if you feel uncomfortable and unpleasant about it for no reason, if you spiritually feel that way, then you should not invest in it. It will surely a failure. How you feel inside is the signal from the Spirit. It is the spiritual intuition. Pastor Kenneth E. Hagen also said about this. The Lord said to the pastor, If you use spiritual intuition very often, I will give you the gift of spiritual intuition. If you are highly sensitive, you would know what it is. You know women have a sharp instinct, or feeling from gut. When a sensitive person believes Jesus, he becomes spiritually far more sensitive. Once such a person gets interested in spiritual world, he becomes more sensitive. When looking for job. Even if there is a job, or a company, that gives a high annual salary. If you are skeptical and unsure about the opportunity, or the place, you should drop it. You are planning to travel to some place, but if you feel very anxious about the place, then what you do? You should put a hold on the plan and ask the Lord. It looks it has got no problem. Even though it looks all right from your perspective, but the Lord tells you in advance because there will be some incidents or problem coming. How grateful. We all have spiritual intuition. If the Holy Spirit is in you, you have spiritual intuition. But as you are not sensitive enough, you have not been able to use it well. I will tell you about my experience in China. One day, I had to go to the police station to apply for my visa. So I was putting my shoes on. Suddenly a thought came into me that the police station was closed that day. I knew it not by hearing but by spiritual intuition. The thought came into me that the police station was closed that day. I thought why it would be closed today since is working day. It was ridiculous to think like that. Today is working day, why would it be closed? I ignored my feeling. And I went to the police station and I found it was close. It was written, from today the police station is closed for days. Then I realized that the Lord had informed me about that ahead. And I said to the Lord that I was wrong to ignore the signal from Him and I came home. I knew when the holiday of the police station ends because I saw the notice on the door. I was putting my shoes on to go there and the thought that it is closed again today came into me. But I clearly saw the notice about the holiday at the door of the police station. I said, Lord, I clearly saw the dates, and it is open today for sure. And I went there and I found it was closed again. It was closed even though it was supposed to be open that day. 
so I came home and repented sincerely. Lord, I am so sorry. I did not trust you but believed what I saw with my eyes. On the third day, putting my shoes on, I asked the Lord. Lord, is it open today? And I felt like the green light was on in my heart. So I went there and it was open. I am a bit embarrassed sharing my story. There are many times that we get disadvantages when ignoring spiritual intuitions. It is this simple. Yes or no. Once you get it, any problem will get solved easily. Then you can easily hear the voice of the Lord. Is it yes, is the Lord saying yes or no? Lord, should I go? At that time, you should try to feel or hear what the inner voice, the Spirit, says to you. Then you will find the answer. If you keep practicing it, it will bring a lot of benefits to your life. When the gift of faith comes to you, you can accept it and proclaim as the way the gift leads you. Then it will lead the way and things will be done. Fifth, the gift of working of miracles. Spiritual ability to do miracles by the power of God. Who had done many miracles in the Old Testament. Yes, it's Elijah and Elisha. They worked a lot of miracles. Of course, Isaiah also did a lot of miracles. Hezekiah was deadly ill, but when Isaiah put the cake of figs on the boil, Hezekiah got healed. He got healed through the cake of figs, which originally got no special effect on his illness. 2 Kings 6, as one of the disciples of Elisha was cutting trees, the axe head fell in the water. So Elisha cut off a piece of wood and threw it into the water and made the axe head float. The servant of Elisha made some stew with poisonous gourds, not knowing they are poisonous. Some prophets ate it and they said it is poisonous. What did Elisha put in the stew? Elisha put some flour in it and it became all all right and it did not harm the people. Can flour detoxify poisons? Were it us, we would have analyzed the ingredients of the flour. After all, it means God had been watching him whether Elisha acts on faith or not, and God did miracles for Elisha. That is what the Lord wants to say. Through the gift of working miracles, we can do miracles. Doing miracles in the Old Testament and doing miracles in the New Testament. Some people even wonder which one is stronger. Everyone, of course. Miracles happen a lot more in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon prophets, priests, and kings. Coming upon them, the Lord anointed them. But how about in the New Testament? Where does the Spirit come upon? He comes into us. Into whom? He comes into Christians. That is why there are a lot more miracles in the New Testament. However, many people say the working of miracles had finished in the past, but we should never believe that. Have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where did God pour out his gifts of the Spirit? In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul is explaining the special abilities the Spirit gives to brothers and sisters in Corinth Church. He sent a letter to them and wrote in it that God had given the abilities through the Spirit. Paul is explaining different kinds of spiritual gifts. It is not written some of them are gone and only a few are left. It means the gifts written in the Bible are still seen in churches even now, amen. You should believe that. The Bible says spiritual gifts are given to each of us so we can help each other. In 2 Kings chapter 2, it is written Elijah was carried by a chariot of fire drowned by horses of fire into heaven. Elisha picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and returned to the bank of the Jordan. He was standing on the bank of the river and there was no way to cross it. Elijah and Elisha crossed the Jordan River because God had told Elijah to go to Jordan River. Elijah struck the water with his cloak and it divided so they went across on dry ground. And after crossing the river, because Elijah was taken into heaven and Elisha had to cross the river by himself, but there was no way to cross there. At that time, he did not walk on water. However, while ago Elisha had seen Elijah dividing the river by striking the cloak on the water. 
So Elisha struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elisha went across. Amen, Amen. What a wonderful miracle! There had been no rains for a long time and the Lord told Elijah to go to the east and stay by Kareth Brook. But after a while, the brook dried up as well and the Lord told him to go to the village of Zarephath. The Lord said there is a widow who can feed Elijah. So he went there, but there was not enough food as well because there had been no rains for some time. When he got to the village of Zarephath, he met the widow and said, Bring me a bite of bread. The widow said, I swear by the Lord that I don't have a single piece of bread. I have only a handful of flour and a little cooking oil. I was about to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. The power of the Lord came out through him. So she brought the bread to him. And she and Elijah and her son continued to eat for many days, and there was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers. It was like when they wake up in the morning, the flour and oil were filled up again and again. It was just like that. Here's another miracle from the Bible. One day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. She went home and borrowed many jars from neighbors and poured the oil from her flask into the jars. When there was no empty jar left, the oil stopped flowing. This is the gift of working miracles. Is it only in the time of Elijah? No, it is still here in our time as well. There is a missionary Heidi Baker doing mission work in Mozambique. You can also find her testimony on YouTube. She is a pretty woman. When she was in the last semester for the doctoral course, God told her to drop the course. I think God tends to tell us to quit something at those important moments of our life. God told her to quit her Ph.D. course and go to Africa. So she quit her study and went to Africa to obey the word of God. Roland, Heidi's husband, and Heidi Baker went to Africa. While serving the ministry in Mozambique, God did tremendous miracles and wonders there. As soon as she laid her hands on the sick, people got healed. Actually, she did not have the power from the Spirit at first. But the Lord poured out the gift on her because she obeyed Him. In Mozambique, God helps her with food because she needs to feed lots and lots of orphans. For instance, if there were 300 orphans to feed, but there were only 10 breads left. Then she prays, the God of orphans, I need lots of loaves of bread for them. Please give us the bread. I thanks God who always supply enough. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. After the prayer, she witnessed the bag with food never got empty until they fed all the children there. The miracle of five loaves and two fishes. Where did all the breads and fishes come from? Of course, it came from the hands of Jesus. Jesus prayed to God and gave the food to the disciples to distribute it to people. 
and all the food came from the hands of Jesus. There are also many other cases of miracles. Have you heard about that when Rev. David Andrew Robertson had a meeting in Brazil, there were many people who got to have the new gold teeth. Some elderly people who did not have enough teeth attended the meeting and received gold teeth from heaven. The gold made in heaven. I saw it on YouTube a lot of time. You should go and watch it. God works like that for the need of each one of us. Some elderly people can't get treatment for their teeth because they have got no money. And without teeth, they can't eat so God gave gold teeth to them. When we need God's help and when we are in great need. If you have enough faith to receive the gift from God, God will fulfill your need by giving you the gift of the Spirit. We are so thankful. Also now, God works on where there are those who are in need and who believe God. Sixth, the gift of healing. Do you think God has compassion for people or not? Yes, God does. God is compassionate and gracious. Looking at the page, it says about the gifts of healing. The one who received the anointing of healing from God can heal the sick. Healing by faith differs from healing by the gifts of healing. Healing by faith is possible 24 hours, 365 days. But healing by the gift of healing is possible only when there is the anointed one who has the gift. And he heals people by the power of the Spirit. Healing by the gift is possible only when the Spirit gives power. Without the anointing of the Spirit, the gift of healing can't work because it is the gift of the Spirit. If you believe the Word of God, Mark 16 verse 18, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink poison, it will not hurt them at all, they will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. And keep trying to heal sick people by laying on of hands, you can heal yourself and others. However, in chapter 28, we're talking about the healing by the gift of the Spirit, not by faith. The gift from the Lord. Those who have a strong faith and have received the gift of healing from the Lord can heal more people. It is because they can heal by faith and the gift of the Spirit. But if you have the gift of healing, then heal with the gift. The gift of healing can heal faster. The gift of healing often brings healing on the spot. The healing by faith usually happens gradually. And that is really necessary. Why do you think it is written as the gifts of healing? It is because there are so many kinds of diseases, right? Reverend Kenneth E. Hagen told about it. He had healed many people who had each different sicknesses. One day some of the ministers who received the gifts of healing gathered together. And while having a conversation, they began talking about the diseases they can heal. They asked each other about what diseases they specialize in. One of the ministers said he can heal blind people about 100%. Another minister said, if someone who has cancer comes to me, I can heal them about 100%. So they had a different kind of gift of healing. It means when the gifts of healing come upon us, each different kind comes to us because there are many kinds of diseases. Yes, there is also the gift of healing that can heal every disease. God has given some people various gifts of healing that specialize in each different disease so when people with a certain disease come to the minister who has the gift to heal the specific disease, they can get healed faster and easier. When I was doing mission work in China, helping people who can't get pregnant was not difficult for me. For me, healing infertility was easiest. After I successively witnessed that many women got pregnant after I prayed for them with laying hands on them, infertility was no longer a difficult task. So I aimed higher and higher. Of course, infertile women are desperate to have pregnant. They feel like getting pregnant is so difficult and almost impossible. But to those who received the gift of healing infertility, it is not impossible, but rather easy. Hence, God has given each different gift of healing to people. And that is why it is written as plural in the book. I urge you to try by yourself. Try to heal yourself first and then do it to your family. If you prayed to get rid of someone's cold and many people got actually healed, then it means you have received the gift of healing for flu. 
It means God has given you the gift. The thing is, if you get healed only by the gift of healing, you get healed only when you come to the person with the gift of healing. However, even though it takes more time to get healed, if you keep trying to heal yourself and others by increasing your faith, then you can proceed to a higher stage. And such faith and anointing never disappear. But the anointing, the gift of healing disappears sometimes. Reverend Kenneth Hagen also said he experienced that the gift of healing left from him while he was laying hands on someone. So he said to people, the anointing from the Spirit, the gift of healing just left from me. From now on, I will heal by faith. When the anointing from the Spirit is especially strong, my whole body staggers. When the anointing is strong, one laying on of hand staggers as well. Do you the feeling of electric shock? When you plug the cold into power, sometimes you get an electric shock. Once I placed my hands on a sister. I was like this. Like this. It felt like a really strong electric shock. Oftentimes, when I lay hands on people, I feel like something goes out of me and it feels like stinging electricity. At first, I feel stinging like I have pins and needles in my legs. When I was in Chongqing doing mission work, the Lord spoke to me that He will give me the gift of healing. He said I should use the gift for those who are poor and in need and in darkness. And I received the gift and suddenly I felt a stinging pain in my whole body. When we have an electric shock, we have stinging pain. At that time, it was more of strong stinging pain not tingling pain. And when I put my hands on some people, oftentimes, they felt the stinging pain as well. Let me tell you a story about Rev. Kenneth E. Hagen. When he received the gift of discerning spirits, God told him to reach out his hands. God said, if devils are working inside someone when you lay your hands on the person, you will feel the evil spirit flipping around in your right and left hands. You know the feeling when something bouncing in your hands. God said to him, if you feel like a frog hopping around in your hands when laying your hands on someone, you should know that evil spirits are working in the person. So whenever he felt the feeling like frogs jumping in his hands, he drove out the devils working inside people. That was how Rev. Kenneth Hagen drove out the spirit of diseases from people. God gives each different gift of healing to the anointed ones because there are many kinds of diseases. There are tools to use when healing people through the gift of healing. James 5 verse 14 says, Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. In this case, they use oil. Olive oil. When someone is sick, Jewish people put oil from a small jar on the person and pray for him. In fact, it is not oil that heals the person. But who heals the sick? The Lord heals the sick. Even though we can't see, in the fourth dimension, the Lord heals the sick. The reason to apply oil is to raise the faith of the sick. Seeing oil applied, the sick will think he will be healed through the prayer of the minister or the one who has the gift of healing. Do you get it? If not applying oil, we can't heal? Even without it, we heal. When I went to Shanghai or somewhere else for ministry, I used not to bring a jar with oil. Without oil, did people get healed? Yes, they did. Yes, they got healed and walked. The purpose of applying oil on the sick is to raise his faith. Other tools are handkerchiefs and aprons. Acts 19, 11, 12 says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick. And their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. As the Bible says so, clothes, handkerchiefs, or aprons of the anointed ones can be used to heal the sick. There is a Reverend David Hogan. He came to Korea a few times. Whenever he holds a meeting or seminar, people bring their stuff such as scarf, clothes, and so on. And they put it in front of him. When Reverend David Hogan lays hands on the things and prays on it, the anointing from the Spirit gets passed on to the things. And people bring their stuff back and put it on the sick and the sick get healed.
He does that because the Bible says so and Paul did it as well. Therefore, towels, handkerchiefs, or aprons of the anointed ones can be used to heal the sick. Some people pass on the anointing from the Spirit only by speaking, but some people lay hands on the sick. What is in the hands? The Holy Spirit is in us so the anointing can be passed on when laying hands on the sick. I told you that when I pray for healing for someone, I feel like excise something gets inside the person from my hands. And when the thing comes back into my hands, then it means the person refused to get healed. In that case, he can never get healed and then he would die soon. When I did not know about this fact, I did not know what it was about when I felt something like egg got out of my hands. Later, I read the book of Rev. David Hagens, and it was written that he had experienced that sort of thing twice in his life. And Smith Wigglesworth also said he had such an experience. It is said that what I felt in my hands when laying hands on the sick was the power of healing. It was the power getting out my body and coming back again. Because the sick refused it. God gives us the gifts and we are so grateful to Him. And we heal others through the gifts. When praying for someone to get healed. I want to emphasize this. The fasted way to get healed is that one self repents sincerely. In many cases, disease comes into us when we open the door to evil spirits by committing sins. For that reason, we can get healed by repentance before asking the Lord for healing. Lord, I have committed this and that sins. Please forgive me with the blood of Jesus. I no longer want to commit sin with my body. Cleanse me with your blood. We should repent like this first. And after repenting, you should bear the fruit worthy of your repentance. Let's say you used to steal things from others, but you have decided to quit stealing. Then from the next day, you should never steal things. Such resolution and action are necessary. Let me tell you about my other experience. One time, in Shanghai, China, there was a sister I knew and I prayed for her father to get healed. He was deaf and had a limp and after I prayed for him he got healed and became able to walk and hear normally. Therefore, they were so joyful. But after one week, the sister made a phone call to me and said that her father has hearing problems again. As soon as I heard it I asked her, did your father commit sins? She answered, I did not know about it before. But in the past, my father used to steal toilet papers from public toilet. He used to steal the toilet papers as a profession. Stealing things from others. Maybe he got really interested in it. So he continued to steal things. After her father getting healed, she heard her father saying he would not steal anymore. However, a few days later, he wanted to steal again. So he stole again. After stealing things from other houses, he came home and his hearing problem appeared again. The symptom appeared again because he led himself to devils again by committing sins. I said to the sister, let's pray. Tell your father to repent first. And let's pray for him. So her father repented and I prayed for him again and the symptom disappeared. I said, please, let's do not do this again. No more committing the sin. Not anymore. Several months later, she called me again. She said her father started stealing again and he can't hear again. So I prayed for him again and he repented and got healed again. I asked him again not to sin again. And then I told her that now it's your turn to pray for him. I said, your father seriously needs to stop stealing. The Bible says if we sin, we legitimately open the door for devils to get into us. The Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold. Once you commit sins, the door opens and the devils come inside us legitimately. It is the law of the fourth dimension that when we sin, the devils can attack us. So if you feel sick, then you should repent first before the Lord. And most of the times, people get healed after repenting. Even without driving out devils by the name of Jesus, if you repent, you get cleaned from sins and become holy. 
then the relationship between you and the Lord recovers so it helps you get healed. That is why you need to repent. And the time when we don't seek the Lord but walk in a worldly way. At that moment, we should turn back to Him quickly, attend worship, read the Bible, and pray again. The name of Jesus is what we need to be healed and to heal others. Recently I read a book written by Smith Wigglesworth. There was a story that a female patient all of a sudden died before her boyfriend. And her boyfriend got shocked and panicked. So Smith Wigglesworth took her up in his back and tried to make her stand by the wall. He did so because she died and could not stand on her own. Then Smith said, In the name of Jesus, raise from dead. He believed just as the Bible says. In this way, he raised 23 people from death. In the name of Jesus, raise from dead. He shouted twice. Then she got alive again. And he shouted, In the name of Jesus, walk, and then she started to walk. It is the grace of the Lord. He was a simple-minded man. We can't heal when we think in a complicated way. The good news of salvation is also very simple. Getting healed is about simply believing in Jesus' name, everything is possible and every knee shall bow. Yes, as the Bible says so, I can try it with faith. You need to have this attitude. The key point is that you need to increase your faith on your own, not needing to get help from others. I will get healed by the prayer with the anointing of healing. Such thought is of the stage of an immature one. You should not stay at that level. You should pray and heal yourself in the name of Jesus. You know the health condition of yourself and your family. That is needed. There was a Pastor Granville Oral Roberts in USA. He is one of the most well-known ministers who did the healing ministry. He said that he had laid his hands on many people more than anyone. He said even if only one person out of 1,000 people gets healed, he still continues to pray and lay hands on people for healing. If then, the more he lays hands on, the more people can get healed, right? That is why he said we should lay hands on many people. He said the reason that people got healed from his prayer is that he had laid hands on as many people as possible. So we should also do it. He said if we do it ourselves, we will find distinct aspects from it. He said if we continue to pray for healing, we will notice that people with a certain disease will get healed more, and then, it means the gift of healing for that disease has come into us. I will end the lecture about the gifts of healing by now. Next week, I will talk about the rest three gifts of the Spirit. I urge you to use the gift. Who is in us? The Holy Spirit. We can increase our faith and heal by relying on the Spirit. And while doing so, the Lord may give us the gifts. I will try healing only when I receive the gift of healing. Don't think like that but believe in Mark 16 verse 18. And then try to lay hands on the sick. If you have diseases, command the disease to go out of you in the name of Jesus. And it will be done as you pray.